Welcome life science students. We are looking at viruses today. And I'm sure as soon as you hear the word viruses, there are so many things that pop into your mind. COVID, Corona, right? We, li we living the times where that is a pandemic. So what we're looking at now, we're looking at a section called microorganisms. And we're looking at a few microorganisms that are going to have a huge impact on society. So the first microorganism that we're going to look at today, we're going to look at viruses. Now, if we have a look, all right, at a concept question here, I'm sure a lot of you might know what the coronavirus or the, COVID, the coronavirus family or the COVID-19 virus looks like. We're going to use that a lot as part of a reference because it's something that you've lived through that you'll be able all right, to, to have a much better understanding of. Okay, let's have a look at our concept map. All right. Okay, what we're going to look at is quite simplistic. What we need to do, and we're going to do this for each of our microorganisms. We're going to look at the microorganism. It's got specific characteristics, all right? What does it do? How does it do it, right? What does it look like? And then for each of the microorganisms, your teacher or whatever you, right, where you, if you're homeschooling, whatever, you need to choose a disease, right? I am going to discuss three, and then you only need to know one. And very often, you actually are going to be given other diseases, but you need to understand the basic concept of what are we looking at when we are looking at that microorganism. Right, so for the viruses, for this lesson, what do they look like? What do they do? And we're going to look at a few diseases, right, that specifically play quite a role in our country, and they're going to have a huge effect, right, at times, especially if we're looking at COVID on the South African economy. Okay, guys, there are a few key words over there. I'm not going to go through every single word, right? If I do pop up some of them, you will see, I will explain what the words is. But these are the words that you're basically going to need when we describe viruses, okay? We're going to start off with the whole concept. It's a microorganism, and what are they? In each of those terms, you're going to see we are going to talk about when we get to each of the slides. So let's start. Okay, guys, when we look at a virus, all right, I need you to understand, right, and it's quite difficult to understand, that we're looking at something, a microorganism is something that's really, really, really small, right? It's smaller than bacteria, right? It's a really, really, really tiny organism, hence the word microorganism. But if you can remember masks and if you can remember corona, Right, you are going to realize that if something very, very small can have a huge, huge, huge impact. Okay, so when we're looking at viruses, first of all, right, very important that you understand. Oh, let me go. I have not clicked there. Oh, and we're going to go back. Pen, let's choose a color. Blue is always the best color. Right, guys, they are very, very small. So every time you look at this picture, right, you need to understand that a really specialized microscope is going to, all right, be used. Now when we get to viruses, I'm going to show a picture, all right, to you just now about the structure. Um, when you might, when we look at classification of organisms, and you might do that later on in the series, living things are classified into different kingdoms. Now, I use the word living. When it comes to a virus, all right, we, I think last year, last year, maybe last year, all right, you might have looked at it. When we come to a virus, a virus does not fit into any of the living kingdoms, right? And here's the first word that I need you to understand. The word is a cellular. Viruses are non-living. And because they're non-living, let's link it to this thing. We can't kill them. Guys, we cannot kill them. I'm sure you've heard a lot about the word vaccines, vaccinations. What they are, quite simply, is they cannot cure 
right, the viruses. When we inject them into us, we build something called an antibody that helps us to fight it. All right, it uses our own body system to be able to fight it. We can't kill it. We can't use special medicines. The reason being, it's not living. How do you kill something that technically, right, is dead? I can't say dead, so that's why we use the word acellular, so non-living. Okay, what else are viruses? Okay, guys, very important. They need a host. Right, they need a host. Because they are non-living, a virus needs to get into a living cell. And then it makes copies of itself, we call it replication. And then those copies come out in their millions in your body and then go and attack your other cells. Okay, so unlike, I don't know if you can remember when you were um, in earlier years, you did something, I always teach mine, Mrs. Hreef, all right? Some use different things, all right? And the movement, so living things need to move, they need to, all right, respire, they need to be sensitive, as in, all right, sensitivity, they need to grow, they need to reproduce, oopsie daisy, all right? They need to reproduce, they need to excrete, and they need to feed. All right, viruses cannot do any of that. Some people say they reproduce. Yes, they do make copies, but they can only make copies if they are living inside a host, All right? They need a living cell in order to be able to do what they need to do. Okay, let's carry on here. Okay, so we've looked at the concept that a virus is a cellular. Now, I'm sure you've done what a cell is. Now, when we look at the concept of a cell, I'm going to draw one quickly for you. Just I hope you can remember. We had a cell. A cell had a cell membrane, all right, over there. It had a nuclear membrane. I'm just going to put N. M for nuclear membrane, and then it had a whole host of organelles. You would have had the ER, you would have had the Golgi apparatus, you would have had cytoplasm. Let me make Golgi so you can read it better. You might have had something called a ribosome. In the middle there, you would have had DNA, chromatin network, all right? But if we look at the concept of a cell, the living contents is the cell membrane and the cytoplasm and the organelles inside there. Now I'm going to take a look at the structure of a typical virus. And I'm going to use the COVID virus, all right, as an example of what a virus generally looks like. We can see there are a few definite shapes, but most viruses have got a basic shape. Let's take a look at the diagram on the board. I have color coded it, these three colors, and if they have the same color, it's pretty much because they've had the same function. I'm gonna start off with this little structure in the middle. This is really important, and what a nucleic acid is, is it's DNA or it can be RNA. Now what that means is deoxyribose nucleic acid or a ribose nucleic acid. What that simply means is its genetic material. And what the virus does is it puts their genetic material in you, so it changes your cells to become their cells. All right, like a virus of a computer. It takes over your computer and it does what it wants to do and not what you want to do. So keep that concept in your head, all right, in your mind. So in the middle, right, in the middle of it, we've got this little genetic material. That's really important because what does genetic material tell the cell? Tells the cell what to do, right, what to make. Right, the second thing that I need is I need a capsule. And what the capsule is, if you have a look at these three parts, right, the capsid, a lipid layer, and the membrane, you don't need to know these things, but all you need to know is, look at the layers. So 
if I was to draw something here, we have a little DNA, and imagine we've got layers around it. Okay, and all those layers, they're not a cell membrane, they're not living. It's a protein, or right, a capsule, right, that just holds the DNA in place. So it's just a housing, it's not living at all. Okay, now if you have a look at this one over here, just as a matter of interest, it's the lipid layer around the COVID. I'm sure you guys are wondering, why on earth must we use hand sanitizer, all right? What is so special about washing our hands in hand sanitizer? Now, I don't know if you can remember back when we looked at biochemistry and you looked at the properties of lipids. Now, lipids are fats, and fats and water don't mix. The water just runs off fat. But if I have alcohol and fat, it dissolves the, the, the fat layer. The alcohol dissolves it. So if I have my hand sanitizer, look what I do. I dissolve this outer layer. And as soon as I take away its protection, what do I kill? I kill, I don't kill it, but I make the virus, it can't work. Right, so that's why I sanitize, so it doesn't sit on me, right, and able to spread here. So I keep it virus-free. That is the whole thing of the, right, of the, the reason why we have hand sanitizer. Now, most viruses are going to have right, these little spike proteins. Now, the spike proteins right, are very important. Imagine here's a cell. All right, and here, imagine this is the virus coming in. A virus needs to attach to the cell. What do you think those spike proteins are? They're like landing gear, all right? So they're going to come and they're going to attach onto the cell. And then what they need to do, I'm going to show a slide just now, they need to get their DNA into the cell. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about vaccinations and vaccines, Right, and we heard about maybe some of the vaccines are mRNA vaccines, and those vaccines, guys, are going to work on these spike proteins. Right, so if we can stop them from attaching, or if our body can realize what's in our body before we get sick, that is what a vaccination is about. Okay, so that's the basic structure that we're looking at when we look at a virus. This is generally, as you can see, this is covid there we go. That is the lipid layer on the outside, and there are the spikes. So this would be the lipid and protein layer. Okay, it's called a capsid. Capsid, All right? A coat, and these are the spike proteins. Okay, these are very crucial when it comes to making the vaccine. Viruses have a few shapes, right? This shape over here, we call the helical shape, a helix, because that's what a helix is. And believe it or not, viruses attack plants as well. And that common one is the tobacco mosaic virus, right? Some of the viruses, they're called polyhedral, right? Just meaning it has a lot of different shapes. You don't need to know all of these off by heart. One, yeah, this is the, right, the coronavirus is part of this one, the spherical. Do you see all the keys? This is an interesting one over here. This is called a bacteriophage. And this is the reason why I want to show you. This bacteriophage, right, attacks bacteria. So a lot of, lots of people think, oh, bacteriophage, it's a bacteria. No, virus that attacks a bacteria. So now you understand that a bacteria is the smallest living thing. Viruses are even smaller than that. Okay, so guys, I want to show you a diagram here. All right. it's, not, it's not something that you have to understand, but you need to understand how a virus attacks a cell. Just, just a general thing. So let's have a look at the structure over here. So what you have is you have the virus... Guys, and then it attaches to a specific cell. And the word specific, all right, because viruses don't go eeny, meeny, miny, mo, which cell. They are very specific as to which cell they attack, all right? 
then can you see, look what it does. Whatever way, it needs to get its DNA into your cell. Okay? And then it does that. And it goes to your DNA and it corrupts it. It says to your DNA, no, no, don't make your DNA. You need to make my DNA. You need to make copies of me. Okay? And then in the cell, you know, when we did biochemistry, the cell is made up of proteins. So basically, it takes the proteins in your cell and it builds itself a little capsule around. So now remember, I've made lots of copies of my DNA because I've told your DNA to do so. I now put a little protein coat around it and I've made myself a new virus. I go out your cell, I burst out, I destroy your cell, and that one virus has made thousands of copies inside your cell. They go out into your body and they affect all the different cells. And that's obviously how you are going to get sick. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick little break and we'll come back just in a jiffy.